Hi, it's Sarah with House Copper. Welcome to the first video in the new shop. Um, it's awesome and I wish you all could come here and, and enjoy it. And actually um, in 2023, I will be doing some workshops here in Wisconsin, in my shop, one day, two day, three years, uh, three days um, of various different uh, activities. So. Keep an eye out for those on my website or go to House Copper and sign up for uh, getting notifications about the workshops. You won't get like anything else from me. It'll literally just be like, hey, FYI, I have workshops. Here they are and here's when they are and how you can sign up. But anyway, so that said, today we are going to be doing a lid build, but it's not a typical round lid. Um, everybody has different types of cookware of various shapes, sizes, ages, makes. And this one is <clears throat> a oval rectangle. And it's, so it's funny, the base actually is oval, whereas the outside is more square. But we're going to build an over lid, so not something with an interior rib, rim band, which I've done before in circles, and you can find those videos also here on my channel. But you, um, sometimes we do lids that go over the top and you will see these in older bills uh um uh dub double yes i can't pronounce i'm not good at french um some of the boilers from france um fish poachers things like that often may have a, a lid where the rim band goes over the top so that's what we're going to build um in a couple parts i don't know if i'll get the whole build in today and um it you know it's gonna take some finagling because some of my tools aren't big enough to do what needs to get done. But without further ado, we are going to build a crazy shaped lid. Okay, here is the exterior rim band, which I have cut to go around the exterior of the piece. So, and what's hard is this is not a symmetrical piece at all. The back is actually longer than the front um, and I'm dealing with, so you're dealing with a couple weird things, but what you're trying to do is get this top piece as tight as possible and you're going to just make sure that you have enough material on the back end to do a lap seam back here. You're going to put it so it fits to the back. You always want the seam, you know, as close to the handle as you can when it just makes for a nicer looking build um, as well as then um, it doesn't have as many issues with that weak point because it's in the back. So it looks like it'll definitely fit. Now this is too long to use on the, uh, on the brake, on the bar folder. So this will have to get bent over for strength. You don't just want obviously this raw edge here to be the, 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 the edge of this, you're going to want it to be folded over, not only for strength, but also so you don't, you know, slice yourself when you're putting, you're using this lid. So that's the next thing we're gonna do, and we're gonna do it over a, the Tinner's Anvil over here. Um, if you have any type of stake, even a blacksmithing uh, anvil will work, but um, you can even do it on the edge. If you've got a metal edge to your workbench, you can use that, as long as it's like a 90 degree angle to get you started. But that's what we're gonna do first is hammer over the edge and just do a single fold over. So I'm going to kind of estimate about a little, a generous eighth, maybe three sixteenths. Um, and I'm going to keep an eye on my entire edge like that. And then very carefully with a rawhide hammer so you don't scratch, ideally, you start to hammer over the edge. And so that's what I'm starting to do. Do you see how the edge is getting moved over? I'm gonna do that bit by bit and I kind of use whatever I've already turned over essentially. I'm going to use that as a guide as I continue down the long line. 
So it kind of catches right here where I already hammered and then that kind of helps me guide uh, further, further down. All right, and now if you notice, it's straight. So um, that's gonna be another challenge later, but I have an edge and now against the metal here, you're gonna start, and ideally you'd kind of line it up right on the edge here and hold it tight wherever you're gonna hammer and you start to fold over your, uh, your edge. So as you can see now, I'm bending it down. And now you have a folded edge that is both strong and not sharp. And that is the bottom of your lid once you get it shaped. So that's, we're gonna shape it next over the pot. All right, so I'm gonna kind of fi figure out where my bends are by putting the location of the seam right here. That's where I'm gonna have my, my seam. So now I'm going to go, okay, I want my bend, my first bend at this corner. So I can, you can try and bend it around this, but it's not gonna stay very well. It's gonna gape here, it's gonna gape there. So we're actually gonna kind of roughly hold that spot. Walk over here. You can use any type of pipe or anything like that. And I'm just gonna kind of gently give a bend, not a lot, just a tiny. Um, and you wanna go slow because otherwise you are gonna kink what you're making um, around the, the base there. It'll kind of kink out on you and you'll, you'll be stuck with uh, trying to get that out. Okay, so there, that kind of fat, like see how nice it sits there now? Let's see if you can see. Uh, hold it with one hand. Um, but like if I were to, you know, I really just need another person in the shop. But now it sits nice. So now I'm going to kind of go, okay, I want a bend right here, right there. And we'll go back over. And so obviously, as you can see, it's finicky. You're, you're kind of guessing as you go. Um, and it's a, a lot of eyeballing because, you know, this is not a, a piece that you can do math that well for. There, see how nice that sits now? And then you're just gonna keep going as best you can. All right, so now we've got our bends. And now watch. Now you saw how kind of it didn't fit well when we first started this process. I've made my bends. And now I'm going to try and get it on. Now you don't want this so tight that it won't slide up and down. So there needs to be just a tiny bit of give with when you're, when you're doing your seams. And that's the tricky part right now because it wants to come apart. But I'm going to, and then, you know, your top, when you put it, your, your top on, that's going to help hold the shape. There, that's where we want it. But you see how nice that fits now? So we're going to clamp it. Let's see here. I'm going to hold it there. And we'll clamp it there, and then we'll solder right at that seam. Here is our cover. Now that I um, soldered that seam, it looks nice and clean from the outside. And then I'm just gonna triple check. So just so you know too, the, uh, the folded seam right there, that, that's what goes down on the body. That's your kind of your gentle edge, as it were. Moment of truth, did I solder it? Yep. Okay, so it slides on nice like that. And now we're going to make the top, which is again going to be done just by guessing. So I'm gonna trace it, cut it out, and then it'll be a lap seam to go over the top of this. Um, so whatever I trace, I also then have to add an eighth inch uh, additional to the exterior of the pattern that I'm kind of making up as we go along. So the next is gonna be this trace. And then you'll see me add the uh, 1 8 inch um, outside of the line that I trace. You'll see it. Okay.
You always want to use um, scrap whenever you can, just because you don't want to waste material if you don't have to. And funny, you know, because again, the base is nothing like the top. I can't use the base to trace. So you do have to um, kind of, oh my gosh, this is really tricky, you guys. Oh, why are they always so hard to do? All right, so I'm going to start tracing upside down and hope to God I'm close. Here's a line. And I'm going to add at least, let's just say a generous eighth to the outside. So here's my line here and down there. I'm gonna like add another, I'm kind of going like 3 sixteenths, aren't I? Yeah, that's fine. I'm adding that and that is what is going to allow me to do a burr. Um, and you kind of have to follow the line of the shape, which is not straight, as always. Um, but that's going to allow me then to, to turn or to burr the pattern to create the lap seam to sit over the top of the exterior. So now that I have, you know, a rough estimate, now the corners are a lot trickier. So I've drawn lines up top and I've drawn them all along here, but at the corners... I just am eyeballing my generous eighth inch, if not three sixteenths. And you kind of sketch these last bits. Okay, here is our piece. As you can see, it's kind of the odd shape that the pan is. And now in order to get this to fit on here, Sure, we're good. And it's going to kind of become this. Um, we have to burr this edge, uh, probably, I'm going to say a, about an eighth um, to you know one side. And then that will kind of be the cover for our, our band here. Um, and then once that's done and the seam is soldered, or it's soldered on, um, then we can build the handle. So here we go. Here is the burring machine. Here is my ruler and I'm going to do a generous eighth. Maybe a little more. Teeny. Not too much. This needs to be. See, in the, this is the Christmas tree. I don't know if you can see it. There you go. We're gonna go slow, it's an odd shape. And actually I feel like I need to, so going around the corners is going to be particularly tricky. And I can tell already it's not gonna like me. So you just gotta keep your edge. And I'm obviously kind of picking up as I go, because it's not meant to do these long shapes, this machine. It just, they don't like each other. All right. Here's, it has warts, totally expected that. Uh, and also the corners, the, the four corners are all kind of kinked. So we'll take those out over a stake and kind of flatten and and reconfigure this bit by bit so it's night a little bit better less warped um and uh these long faces and stuff like that that it happens you're gonna get something uh similar in diameter and you just hammer out the kinks right here using a rawhide hammer you know so well i can go on the edge here
so that it's smoothed out and not like this. So that's, that's the next goal. All right, now it's time to make the handle for our lid. And I'm gonna do a double fold, which is going to be very helpful for strength without needing the wire. So like anytime when I'm folding and you kind of squeeze it, depending on your bar folder, just as needed. And then, oh my gosh, it's so heavy. There we go. I need to clearly secure this in the new shop a little bit better, but we'll, we'll do what we can when we can. All right, and then this will straighten the other side. And really what you're doing is you're preparing this to be utilized as a handle, which we're going to form and drill once I'm done folding it in a thousand places. Now we're gonna form the handle that is going to go on top of the, the uh, lid. And I do sort of guess, and then make the other side even. So um, I do use some force to get it started and then just use a rawhide hammer so that you don't scratch it as much as you could otherwise. There's one side of the handle. So here's our handle, but now in order to rivet it on, we make little feet down here. And you don't want too much because it'll stick out and you don't want too little because then when you're drilling, you'll end up not having anywhere to drill. So, and you need enough room for your hands. So I try and keep it to roughly half an inch. So that you're making a little foot. And there is our handle. So here's our lid that has fit really nice. And there is our handle. And next, there's gonna be just a tiny drilling into the foot here and then matching it up and riveting on the handle. And then, um, and then I'll solder the, uh, the rivets. So I'll just, it's stuff I've done on here before, but really it's drilling in the foot, drilling in the foot, or drilling here, putting rivets on, and then soldering the inside of this. I'll do a little bit of each piece of this, but I'm not gonna explain step by step um, because it's pretty self-explanatory. But uh, all right, let's uh, attach this handle and be ready to go finally. square pan steak so it's square and flat and it has edges so I have to be really careful when I hammer um, the rivets into this because um, you can dent your space really bad um, these are pretty be round there we go nice and straight so I have to kind of set it so that I have a firm bottom for my rivets okay it's done we did all the steps very interesting shaped lid now you can see that patterns can be very odd, um, but we have a sturdy lid with a very sturdy handle that is the fitting equivalent to this very odd shape. 
and oops, sorry, you don't you didn't get to see me put it on. And it fits. So now I'm gonna clean the rest of this little puppy up and uh, send it off to the customer. But I uh, hope if you have any thoughts or questions or how you would do it, please put them in the comments below. And uh, don't forget to check out my 2023 workshops. There will be, um, uh, there will also be live Q and A's. So a couple of those throughout the year. And uh, if you sign up for just the, the FYI email that I will occasionally very rarely send out to be like, hey, these are the days for the Q and A's this year um, that I'll be answering questions live for like an hour, hour and a half randomly. So um, that'll happen too. Don't forget to pick up Copper, Iron and Clay um, wherever books are sold or subscribe to this channel, share it because you know cooking and copper go together. And anyway, thank you for joining me for the first video of 2023. There will be more to come, um, some baking, some cooking, and uh, lots more. So thank you again for um, for watching. Oh, and of course, as always, where I get the solder and everything like that will also be below. All right, cool. All right, until next time, see ya.